drug resistance in Asia Pacific and in the world is a gigantic problem and because it's preventable and treatable but it occurs because it's ignored. Uh, TB is an easy disease to treat but it takes a long time and the drugs uh, sometimes cause toxicity. And if people aren't treated properly or don't take their medicines properly, they get drug resistance. It's as easy as that. And drug resistance is difficult to treat and expensive to treat. I think the most important issue is that it's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. I mean, places that have a good basic TB control program don't have a whole lot of drug resistance. In our program in the U.S., which is not really comparable, we have 99% adherence. Our patients all take the medicine. We give them directly observed therapy, and we don't cause any drug resistance. If you go to a place, say, Papua New Guinea, where they have a terrible drug resistance problem, it's because the basic TB control program for drug-sensitive TB is so poor, people have lost the follow-up, maybe 30% have lost the follow-up, and maybe half don't have their diagnosis made properly. This is what leads to drug resistance. Well, the diagnostic challenges coming to drug-resistant tuberculosis are first, it's difficult to make a diagnosis, and now it's easier. You know, we, we used to do smear microscopy only. Smear microscopy was cheap. But smear microscopy tells you you have TB, doesn't tell you you have drug resistant TB. Now the World Health Organization has endorsed the use of expert, and if expert is available, although with expert is cheap and you need a source of electricity, uh, with expert you can make the diagnosis of resistance to one of the most important drugs which is, stands in for multiple drug resistant tuberculosis. And expert has been rolled out in many, many places. So like WHO would like to have an expert machine on every street. And unfortunately though, the diagnosis has become so efficient that places don't have the capacity to treat the multiple drug resistant tuberculosis. And thus they have waiting lists to treat multiple drug resistant tuberculosis, which to my mind is unconscionable. Everybody should have access to the care they need. Everybody needs to have uh, drug susceptibility testing upfront, accurate drug susceptibility testing. And if a country makes the diagnosis and then uses a standard regimen, if in their experience that's appropriate and enough and doesn't cause more drug resistance then it's okay but in many countries the drug resistance is unique the standard regimen might even amplify more drug resistance and in that case you need specific diagnosis this is an individual situation it depends on the country but the thing is that this is a human rights issue everybody deserves proper diagnosis for TB. Everybody deserves proper, free, appropriate treatment for TB. And not to do so is an abridgment of human rights. Drugs for TB are relatively new. Before the 1940s and 1950s, there were no drugs for TB. Uh, and people were treated with fresh air and bed rest, uh, which worked half the time. Uh, then drugs were invented, but unfortunately the TB organism is a daunting organism. It's slowly growing. Drugs only work in the rapidly growing phase. So it, it takes months to treat a TB patient, where if you or your child has a strep streptococcal throat, sore throat, you can treat in 10 days. With TB drugs, the basic treatment is six to nine months. And then if they don't take the medicine properly and get drug resistance because the drugs are uh, less good and m the treatment might be 18 to 24 months. And we haven't had any new drugs treated for T any new drugs uh, discovered for TB for 50 years. And then all of a sudden we have two new drugs which are very good for 
TB and multiple drug resistant tuberculosis. One is called Bedaquilin. It's made by Janssen Laboratories. The other is the laminin made by Otsuka. And the problem is these drugs have to be used carefully because remember the patients they want to use them in are drug resistant. Why do you get drug resistant? Because you didn't take your medicine properly. So here we have these two new drugs which are be being made available. If the patient doesn't take the new drugs properly, he'll become resistant to those new drugs. So you've got to be very, very careful with the new drugs, and you've got to make sure the patient takes them properly, and you've got to study the side effects and make sure that you don't cause side effects or further illness in the patient. So it's walking a fine line. People are just learning now how to use bedaquilin, which is more available than the laminin, and hopefully the laminin will come too. But it's very, very difficult. The patient who is, doesn't have any drugs left, gets new drugs, he's very excited, he wants to take them, if he takes them properly, he's likely going to be cured. Bedaquilin now has, in several studies, 80% cure rate. But it has to be done carefully, and you don't want to cause more problems with side effects and things like that. Um, the nine-month Bangladesh regimen, well, used to be that the treatment for multiple drug-resistant tuberculosis was 24 months. 24 months of expensive toxic medicines that are used for second-line treatment because they're expensive and toxic and not as good as the ones that are used for drug-sensitive TB. And then um, investigators from the union, the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease, said 24 months is too long for anybody. Let's try a nine-month regimen with all of the drugs available, some of which are very toxic, but all of them are good and some of them not very used very often. And if we use the nine months, what will happen? So they studied the nine-month regimen in Bangladesh, that's why it's called the Bangladesh Regimen, and other places like Cambodia and a few other places. Uh, and they found that they had excellent results, over 80% cure rate, where previously the cure rate had been 50%. And they said, hey, this is really very exciting. So the evidence is mounting, and it's probably going to work very well. Now, the World Health Organization sanctions the use of these regimens, and they say there's not enough. Uh, they say, yeah, try it and use it, and let's do a long-term trial to make sure. And the long-term trial is in process and probably won't be finished until 2017, 2018. But meantime, it looks so good that people want to use it. And if they use it under study conditions with informed consent and collecting the information, it's appropriate to do so. If I had, God forbid, multiple drug-resistant tuberculosis, I'd want to take that regimen. But if you have a regimen like that, you need infrastructure, make sure the patient takes the medicine, every dose has to be supervised. So we have to supervise every dose, we've got to look carefully for um, toxicities, we've got to treat the toxicities, it's not easy. You should save lives because it's the right thing to do. Um, if you have a transmissible disease like TB and it's drug resistance and brings the cure rate down to 50%, that's, that's like ancient medicine. We need new drugs, we need new uh, diagnostics, we need to turn this around. It's unconscionable that anyone should be allowed to in 2015-2016 die of a treatable, curable, and preventable disease.